I'm sensory as fuck. Do you know how much money the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada makes every year? Well, it's uh, right there in the Judges Act, the law, uh, Section 9. I will put it on the screen here. You can see it. Uh, the yearly salaries of the judges of the Supreme Court of Canada are as follows. A, the Chief Justice of Canada, 403,800 judges. And the eight puny judges, $373,900 each. Puny is actually how you pronounce that word. It has a similar meaning, um, a judge of the lower rank. Uh, so that the chief judge in Canada makes north of 400 grand. And then there's just expenses and there's perks and the general luxury that comes from the job. Um, by comparison, uh, Justin Trudeau, the prime minister makes $379,000, not as much. He makes just under 190 for being an MP, the same for every MP, but then he makes the same again for being the PM. So the Supreme Court judge makes more money than the prime minister. And I'd say he wields enormous power, uh, in some ways more power than Trudeau. The Supreme Court can strike down a law. The judges can last much longer than an elected politician. And of course, the most momentous decisions in Canada are not made by our elected legislators, let alone decided in something as democratic as a referendum. They're decided by nine obscure judges that 99% of Canadians couldn't recognize or name. Abortion, gay marriage, legal rights for for foreign citizens, legal rights for terrorists. No democracy decided that, just the judiciary. And just last week, this, uh, sorry, uh, that last year, pardon me, the Supreme Court came within one vote of criminalizing a comedian's jokes. Remember that case? It was a 5-4 ruling in favor of Mike Ward. That's a comedian in Quebec and his right to make fun of a disabled kid in a comedy sketch. Now, I'm not a fan of making fun of disabled kids, but I'm a lot more scared of a government, which is what a Supreme Court is, that tells me what jokes can be said and what jokes can't be said. A lot more scared of that than what some comedian gets up to in some 18-plus nightclub. Seriously, expect the next free speech court ruling to go 5-4 against freedom. Our court has been steadily getting worse and worse every year, and that's on the judges. Now, I blame Stephen Harper for that in part. You know, he never took Supreme Court appointments seriously when he was prime minister. Five of the nine current judges of the Supreme Court were put there by him, including some of the absolute worst ones. The chief judge of the Supreme Court today, the guy making 400K, his name is Richard Wagner. Stephen Harper put him on the bench, and Justin Trudeau promoted him to chief justice. Wagner took over from the disgraced judge Beverly McLaughlin, who held that post for 17 years overseeing its radical lurch to the authoritarian left. We later found out that Trudeau regarded McLaughlin as a go-to judge for fixing political problems. Very troubling revelations about how in the pocket she was of Trudeau and worse, that corrupt aide, Gerald Butts, remember him? I don't know if you remember, she was asked to come in and write a helpful memo explaining that it was entirely legally appropriate for the government to interfere with the criminal prosecution of Trudeau's friends at SNC-Lavalin to stop their criminal trial. That's how chummy Trudeau and Butts were with McLaughlin. They thought they could ask her, and for good reason, she is one of them, one of the elites. And when she retired as Canada's chief judge, you know this, she joined Hong Kong's Court of Final Appeal. Now, that actually sounds wonderful when she did it. But then Xi Jinping, the Chinese communist dictator, crushed Hong Kong, took it over, exterminated its civil liberties, brought Chinese communist laws and policing into Hong Kong, and ended what was left of its Western freedoms. Mass arrests, including mass arrests of opposition leaders and journalists. Now, 
other judges who were on that same court resigned in protest. They refused to give Xi Jinping moral cover. Uh, they refused to stick around and whitewash it, let alone be a part of it. Not our Bev, not Beverly McLaughlin. She loves it. She loves the power. She loves the prestige, the perks, the pay. She loves being on the winning side. She is completely comfortable with staying on Xi Jinping's court. Yeah, Houston, we have a problem. She really is the worst. Look at this, look at this here. Fed regulations should kill websites that use words hurting democracy, says retired Supreme Court Chief Justice McLaughlin. Consequences ultimately would be to shut them down. Yeah, so much for guardians of our freedoms. Hey, good luck to Hong Kong with her on the bench there. So much for the Charter of Rights. Our judges are an embarrassment. Look at this here from the Globe and Mail. Remember, McLaughlin was the one who said Canada has committed a genocide against indigenous people. She has never said that about China and its treatment of Tibet or the Uyghur Muslims, has she? She hates us. She loves Xi Jinping's China. And that's the thing about our Supreme Court. Do you think they're any less political than politicians in the House of Commons? <laughs> Do you really think they're morally or genetically different? Why? Because they dress up in fancy robes and make you call them my lord or my lady? Do you think they're morally better than other people in other branches of government? The courts are a branch of government. They're just as governmenty as a politician, just as political. Except for one thing, they don't have the political accountability, at least in the United States. Their judges go through a vigorous confirmation process, days and days of grilling, absolutely digging through their past rulings and even their past personal statements and personal conduct. We know everything about those judges and occasionally judges are blocked from taking the position or judges withdraw in embarrassment. We don't have that here. We just have the Prime Minister choosing someone, often a donor. That was an excerpt from my daily TV-style show called The Ezra Levant Show. Each weekday, I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview a fascinating guest. I read some fan mail or hate mail, depends on which I like more, and we end with a video of the day. You can get it all at rebelnewsplus.com.